Hey, it is your buddy, Peace and Harmony, with you here today. Much love going out to all the beautiful, empowered harmonizers. We're zooming in and focusing in on a great viewer question, and that is how to heal from projection. Projection is a psychological mechanism by which an individual will pull from within their own fears, trepidations, insecurities, and they, even though they exist, live, and are expressed within that individual, because the individual doesn't want to see that, understand, or work through, or see the effects thereof, of this component of their quality, of their personality, because it's a large driver to them and getting what they want and what they need and what, you know, sort of that sort of vacuous greed, if you will, and allowing no one to stop in their way or to remove obstacles or responsibility and accountability to remove them from this. Um, and not to be bottled up because if human beings, if they bottle things up and don't address them, otherwise known as procrastination, in certain areas they're going to rear their head. It's going to be problematic for the individual. So rather than the narcissist, <clears throat> and whether um, a psychopath does this, it's really one of the more superficial tools. The psychopath um, partakes in a lot more manipulation and deception than projection. They do a whole host of other situations, but particularly someone who has the cluster B, I would say, is um, more utilizes this um, psychological defense mechanism, um, to which is hurtful of others and causes to push others away. Like, get out of my... Whoa. One of my little cups just dropped. Um, was moving around here. We'll let that be. It's there for a purpose. But it's to understand that oftentimes it's to push people away. And to be pushed away is a very hurtful experience for a lot of people. If this is in your family, your job, your community, it hurts to be ignored. It hurts to be pushed away. It hurts to be alienated. And it's very hurtful to be a receptacle for projection. So to understand projection, um, well, first of all, don't worry about it. We're gonna, you're going to learn about it. Projection means that there is a source of an energy vibration, which is um, unique to the human strata, which means a tree isn't going to project on you. A dog isn't going to project on you. Or maybe they might. They might say, you look like a, a nice person, you know, and not, not realize. You're... Okay, we're not going there. But projection is really in the, in the human strata. So it's a human experience. It's what human beings do to others and other objects. So it's a displacement, meaning a transference. This is a lot of Freudian terms, means it's a, a transference of their own insecurities, their own misgivings, their even sh own shortcomings. But because they don't want to admit shortcomings to themselves or really that human aspects, all humans make mistakes. I mean, to err is to be human. I think there's statements like that all over the place you know, this is how people learn, you know, he, Michael Jordan, you know, failed more than any other athlete because he made more efforts. And he's the first one to tell you that, but you have to be comfortable with yourself as a human and not take it personally. If you make a mistake or an error, you keep it going. You're working, you're getting it right. You're practicing, you know, you're making more attempts, but it's to understand that the narcissist, because they're uncomfortable, it's sort of being perceived of, of being fallible, which means, you know, they might make mistakes. They might have um, a depth to their personality, which they don't open up to others. They don't share, you know, some of these aspects of the human being, you know, the fact that they made a mistake, the fact that they made a misjudgment, the fact that they hurt somebody, you know, they're not going to be open at admitting it and airing it out. And then therefore it never gets worked on. It never gets resolved. It never gets flushed out of the narcissist. They just sort of, you know, bring it along through all their relationships. I mean, it's just, it becomes part of their personality, the cluster B personality. Um, and so the projection, which means there's a displacement of energy, which is 
within that individual person housed within them, which is then thrust or transferred onto another as if a screen and then their perception is perceiving it within you even though it is housed within them. We see that a lot in politics. It's, I mean, you can see it so much nowadays in the political system that it should be laughable that it's so obvious. But the narcissist is in oftentimes in oblivion of denial. Um, and they, the projection is a way for them to release and have a sort of outlet for these feelings, especially when they are challenged or threatened by another. Um, so that, you know, meets them on a level or to, you know, surpass them, um, not meaning, you know, at a game, but to grow, just to be, you know, beyond and not in their control. The narcissist has an insociable need for power and control. Um, especially of the um, perceptions of others. They're very much into um, controlling the outcome. Um, so, you know, you might feel when you're at dinner with them that you don't even have your own plate, that they're like basically drooling over your plate, pointing out this, looking at that, share this with me. You can't even have an ownership of certain things. And it becomes very intensive, you know, um, you know, you, you, you can never have your own wholeness. Um, but projection, so meaning that something that is within them, that they are going to then project onto an innocent, open, clean slate. So in other words, you don't have that as a problem, an issue, a personality aspect, and it's going to be of the negative type. It's not going to be like, because they're so happy that they're projecting their happiness onto you, they're so loving that they're projecting their lovingness onto you, it's the negative aspects, which then are meant to kind of smash you down and just be like the wallop and get you from the backside of the head, like, well, no, you're not happy, you know, and they'll use their own insecurities to displace it, meaning put it in a wrong place, rather than, you know, we hear about people who are displaced from their homes. They're no longer in their home. And the experience of projection is very much the same way. You know, you're receiving this negative energy, which is, you know, indistinguishable from your own, usually because there's either a lack of boundaries or a lack of standards or a lack of emotional intelligence or it can be your age. You know, this might have happened when you're five, six, seven, twelve, or even in your 20s or even in your 30s. And you weren't, you're not aware of this experience. So how can you identify it, see it coming and protect yourself? You just assume that because of their entitlement, the way that they sort of always bolster them, themselves up, that they must be right because they're so right about everything else. That's their persona. Um, or that's their, you know, that's their gig. That's their, how they operate. And so the projection, meaning that, of the negative qualities which are within the narcissist are then thrust upon you as if they are your own. This is known, especially for people who have a lot of empathy, which are sensitive and feel others' feelings, they then think it's their own. They don't, they're not able to distinguish and see, that's not right. I'm not this way. I'm not vain. I'm not arrogant or whatever the projection is. They don't, they're not able to distinguish the difference and they're not able to say that's someone else's energy and then this is my energy and feel it and own it and have it validated. In the relationship with a narcissist, there's not going to be a lot of validation of your of you and your energy and who you are. You know, you're not going to have a good sense of self because they're not open to mirroring that back because of their lack of empathy and because of their pathological sense of self-importance, you won't get a good sense of your sense of self. You won't get a good sense of what it is to be on your own feet. You won't get a sense of what it is to function and have a well-oiled machine and be able to have, you know, communication momentum to be able to have, um, articulate and have vocabulary. It's a use it or lose it situation. So people feel like 
I'm not living my own life or I don't know what my interests are. It's because you have not been able to, to live on that state of consciousness enough. You haven't visited that enough. You haven't gone there. You, you haven't been able to open up that door. You've always had the, the door slammed, you know, every time you try to go there or, you know, hit your head every time you try to elevate and grow yourself, you know, it's just, there's pain involved in the state of projection, meaning it's meant to hinder, be destructive, be damaging, be damning, whatever the word is that you want to use to describe it. And so, um, the experience then of projection is going to be usually of the negative, meaning, um, there, you know, you think you're so important or you think you deserve this, you, you know, and it's like, um, yeah, I need this for my class. It's not, I need this because I think I should be involved in the material. It's because I need this for a specific reason. There is a reason that is meaningful to help me with, you know, this purpose with my life purpose. And so normal, natural things that you would need a hug, eye contact, um, share a meal, um, share a dinner, um, share a holiday in a specific way where you can experience it and not have to be in the egoic sense, which is really the realm of the narcissist. They're kind of in that flatline ego, you know, me, 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 do, do, do. Um, and it, it's not oftentimes a, you can't, you feel that you can't really just be with this person and have a sense of self-validation. So the projection, once again, is sort of, it's feeling of a false accusation. And then it creates this brainwashing and crazy making where then people then try to scramble and try to remove this the projection from them, which is never theirs to begin with. False accusations. You, you know, you're wasteful with water. You're wasteful with uh, uh, the air conditioning. You're wasteful with the electricity. You know, why did you leave the uh, refrigerator door open that long? In, in the moment, that thing's like, it seems like a really bad thing. There must be something inherently wrong. What is wrong with you for leaving the, you know, there's, you aren't perceiving things correctly. There's something inherently wrong with you. Close the refrigerator, but I can't find something close it, you know, and then meanwhile, you go walking away like a wounded puppy. There's something wrong with me. I'm wasteful of electricity and I can't see what I'm looking for. I must be stupid, dumb. All these assumptions then are then experienced by the child or the adult, you know, who is the receiver of this false projection. And oftentimes you don't see it full circle until you really expose the narcissist or study or learn or get to understand what, what is going on um, until you can see it. Um, and today, now, I mean, hopefully you've, if you've uh, studied the uh, politics, you've, let's just not even go there. So anyway, but in your own experience, I think it's important to understand experientially what projection looks like, the function of it. Um, why it is, and to understand that there's oftentimes a very, very close parallel between the projection and the deep-seated insecurity that that person is, is experiencing. So for example, for a narcissist to project, you are not using electricity wisely. You are, um, you are wasteful of electricity wasteful of energy when in fact the source of that person is the one who is wasteful of energy, who is wasteful of electricity, the one who is wasteful of their energy and they're too much in the doing. And be, even though they might be aware of this and they're, the narcissist has this entitled and think that, that they're so superior that any insecurity, any humanness, is a challenge. So being human, because they are human, there, there's an inner struggle, I believe, within these people that they don't feel that they're, you know, they're always, always pining after more greed, me, 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 more. And they don't see the content 
and the gratitude for everything that they have and they kind of bypass that that level of gratitude and content and peace and harmony and openness that they then for the very particular thing they project onto others very it can be when you really look at it especially over a long scale trajectory of time in relationship you can really see how it comes full circle and you now you then are able to connect a lot of the experiences but when you reflect back it's important that you you are not the mind body connection to that original source of injury to realize that was you are not the same body mind and spirit you are able to perceive it now but you are not defined by the projection even though it might have resulted in some brainwashing in gaslighting in crazy making in misunderstanding of your own sense of self it's that's the derision and the cause is because it's a sense of outlet <clears throat> from this individual to release that and i've given um other examples before on the channel but you know in other words and then in the big grand scheme of things had you left open the refrigerator door for 10 seconds or 30 seconds or five minutes did it really affect anything you know um and so you can see how in the moment it's this huge inflated issue when in reality it is meaningless yet in that situation a person can be harmed gravely and deeply of their sense of self and have huge ramifications not only for that individual but for life as a whole because every person is significant every human being is significant you need to really really get that the the um the the percentage and the odds for of your existence in your unique combination of of qualities and where you live and what you've experienced there's nothing else really that has that same experience perception all bottled into one and that is you um and really that is miraculous when you really think about it and yes that is something i think about or have thought about as well as others who kind of get the value of the individual and it's not all based on um, accomplishments it's not all based on possessions it's not all based on your job it's based on humanity okay there does exist a, a, a natural force or a natural power which is known as humanity which you are a part of and you need to be a part of because if you're a human being you need to have a sense of belonging with this so but in a in a happy and fulfilled and safe sense in not to be open to um victimization but to reach understanding and knowing and enlightenment after this is experienced so the universe will provide people in situations to help you through but you have to get into that level of humanity and know what that is and to have appreciation for it so that that will then outweigh the projection which has given a distorted and a deceived sense of self a you call it distorted perverted uh, misconstrued misguided um etc so it is to understand that the projection oftentimes is you're a, a target of this derision because you're seen as a threat or not even you personally but it can just be because of 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 your male or because you're female or because you're older or because you're younger or because i mean it can be any random amount of things that are not because you have not done anything wrong it's not because you have done anything wrong you've been a blank slate you've been a screen for this to be projected upon that you know you've then absorbed because you were open does that make any sense because you did not know because you couldn't see it because you were unaware unconscious you didn't see it but now hopefully you can get with the privacy of these videos you can get an eye to see things now and to understand what projection is um and more examples i know people want examples um so it's to say that um so a, a main aspect 
of a narcissist is to deflect and deny sort of, you know, um, that they're a problem, that, that there's any problem with them. For a lot of people, which is on the flip side, you know, want to be coached, to be helped, to do the right thing. They want to learn, especially, you know, when kids are in school and college, you know, they want to learn the right thing. They want to treat people the right way. They want to, you know, have have a, a, a boy, a girlfriend, you know, they want to they want to be attractive, all these different things. So they're willing to learn, they're willing to adjust and adapt because they want to they want to achieve certain relationships and such. But the narcissist oftentimes they're they're not, you know, open in a similar way. So you can kind of see a difference between narcissist and also um there's sort of an absence of of being genuine. They're always sort of on on the stage. Um and so taking shelter within yourself for a moment and understanding that a projection so you know you think that your all your opinion is all that matters um they might project this uh, from a narcissist um you know you're so vain um you know meaning you know you're brushing your hair and you're trying to get ready for school and you get this yelled at you and then the door slammed you know they're not even looking at you you're getting ready for school and you're being projected on you're so vain meaning you have this sense of self importance you know which you know back in in i think in the 50s you know it, you know in in certain uh, religious upbringings you know there's certain no-nos <clears throat> you know um and these people i think because of their religious upbringing um there becomes this thing as sinfulness and then you know there's a sinful nature and then this can be um you know very much to stay away from and to be disciplined from and so you know you're so sinful so then you've got these really harsh projections you know of being a sinful and so then you've got this whole aspect of projection when you're the clean slate you're not doing anything wrong so this accusatory nature and hypercriticism oftentimes is a result of projection and people go through wounded after wounded after wounded battles with self because of projection so you have to understand that it comes from a very precise if you've really studied it like i have a very precise aspect within that person it can be you know um that they will then shape and form you into this individual with which is to satisfy their projection. So if you have been through this and experienced this, begin to understand the mechanisms of that energy and learn to identify, this is a big lesson, to identify what is your energy and what is another's energy and to be able to have control of what you open up and expose and interact and relate to and be able to shut out and have a boundary for what is not helpful, for what is not, you know, supportive, for what is not empowering. P empowering meaning in your interest to elevate yourself, meaning become out of the apathy, out of the despondency, out of the dep depression, out of you know that all that misunderstanding and to lift and open up those channels and become stable in feeling happy you know oftentimes that really needs to be connected that happiness and having a sense of knowing and being is part of your your constant and your being meaning it's not something that you have to go out there and prove it's not something that you have to go out there and go and get it's something that flows through you and this is a very fundamental and i feel important aspect of life for you to engender and experience but oftentimes that cannot be arrived at when you're in a relationship which is wrought with projection false accusations hypercriticism hyper arousal hyper egoism where it's all about the doing and feeling that you have to get and uh, prove and you know I mean the ego is a reality um and yes we need to have some degree of ego 
you know, meaning a sense of self, but when it gets out of balance and people result to these defense mechanisms, which means to protect themselves, <clears throat> they then utilize a lot of these throughout the day more than a sense of being. So they're caught up in those egoic defense mechanisms when they are not necessary. It creates conflict. It's It creates conflict. And so the natural law of the universe per Dr. David Hawkins is that of economy, meaning, you know, efficiency, which means getting into a higher vibration and valuation and having that, that fluidity and that experience be the place, the way. I don't know it all. I'm not uh, pretending to know it all, but I'm sharing with you some of the components of what projection can feel like what it can look like and its effects it can have to distort and completely um, scratch up your lens so that you can't see things clearly. And it's to re remember that you take charge of your perspective so that your perspective is, is one of content in that you are deriving a sense of comfort, a sense of stability, and a sense of building, meaning you're, you, you kind of, you, you resonate with it and you enjoy it. And when you do that, it'll give a sense of beingness and knowingness and stability, which once you engender this and continue to practice and rehearse, that very practice will protect you and make you stronger and not be attractive to people who are victimizers. I think for once, you know, people on this channel, they don't want to continue in the same life and experience the same role and the same, you know, experience. They don't want to be in the same role in the relationships that they have been hitherto, meaning that they want to have a shift. So you absolutely positively can get there. Um, it's, it, it takes desire and practice and getting into that mindful state rather than that egoic state in trying and experimenting and seeing how it serves you and how it then helps to protect you from further harm, helps you to not be attractive to further victimizers, but that you can so resonate and then have a keener sense of what's going on and then knowing with confidence about making right choices for yourself in being able to say no to others. <clears throat> this is your buddy. Peace and harmony with you here today. I hope that these videos do help. Please share, please subscribe, and please donate for more great tools, videos, discussion, and support. I hope you get back and get an experience of that clean slate within. It is theirs and yours for the tapping into and the experience. Maybe you only have five minutes, 10 minutes, but I hope that you get into that state and feel a sort of lightness of being and a sense of relief so that the projections, you see them for what they are and they not are not harmful because you know your energy and your energetic space and that goes with you and is yours through your days, throughout your days. It's your buddy. Have a beautiful day.